But I'm happy to be here. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We want to just welcome him into this place on today. We want to welcome him into this place. Welcome him into our hearts and our minds and our souls and our spirits so we can prepare to receive the word of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So let's welcome him into this place. Hallelujah. Jesus into this place and so I just want to welcome you into the service on today for those who are here in the sanctuary those who are online welcome 
I want you to enjoy yourself. Don't sit back. Stand up. Clap your hands. Get excited. Enjoy this service on today. Because we're here to praise the name of the Lord. This is our first Sunday. It's our Holy Communion Sunday. So I just want to say welcome. We are glad you're here. Let Amen. me shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Amen, indeed. We are glad you're here. We're glad you're at Mount Zion. We're glad you came to worship in the name of the Lord. Come on, Mount Zion. <laughs> where your honor dwells. For the Lord is in the whole temple. Let all the earth be silent before him. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. O oh Lord, my rock and my redeemer. O oh, sing unto the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. All the earth sing praise. Amen, choir, sing praise. Amen. Thank you. 
God, we don't take anything for granted this day. So God, we thank you, Lord, how you gave us traveling mercies to come out this morning to the house one more time to worship you, God, in the splendor of holiness. God, we thank you for your grace and your mercies, God, that has kept us through another week. God, we thank you, God, how you continuously look after us. We thank you, God. We love you this morning. We thank you, God, that you have kept us and brought us to a brand new month, the first Sunday of the month of April. And for that, God, we said thank you. Truly, you didn't have to do it, God, but you did. And God, we are forever grateful. So God, we thank you this morning for just coming on in the house this morning and worship with us this morning, God, in the name of Jesus. God, we can't do it on our own. God, we ask now, God, that you will help us to get out the way. God, that you can come on in and have your way, God, in this service this morning, God, in the name of Jesus. God, we pray this morning that you move by your power. Move by your spirit this morning, God, in the name of Jesus. Let yourself be known in this place this morning. In the name of Jesus. Let your Holy Ghost anointing power run up and down every eye through every pew, God. In the name of Jesus, touch every heart, mind, and spirit. In the name of Jesus, that we can set aside the weights of this world. God, that we can come with pure and clean hearts this morning. And that we can worship you, Lord God, in Jesus' name. God, we just thank you, God, for just being God. And just being God all by yourself. We thank you, God, for being God in our lives. In the name of Jesus. And God, this morning as we come. God, as we come to your table this morning, God. In the name of Jesus. Help us, Lord God, to get ourselves clean up. Creating us a clean and pure heart. In the name of Jesus. God, don't let us come to this table this morning out of tradition. In the name of Jesus. Help us to understand, God, that there are many who are sleeping. Many who are sick, God. Because they don't honor you, God. In the name of Jesus. So, God, as we come to partake of your body today, God. Let us come, God, knowing, God, that you are the way the truth, and the life. And no one can get to the Father except through you. So God, we thank you this morning. We thank you for your presence this morning, God, in the name of Jesus. So God, we thank you, Lord God, for our pastor, the Reverend Dr. Erica D. Crawford. God, we thank you for the word that you have given unto her this day for your people in the name of Jesus. So God, I pray this morning that you dip her down deep. Bring her up with that realm of word, God. In the name of Jesus, help us to open our hearts, minds, and our spirits to receive what thus saith the Lord. In the name of Jesus, don't let us come in this place and leave the same way that we came in. In the name of Jesus, let your word, hallelujah, God, fall on firm ground this morning, God. In the name of Jesus. God, we pray that you continue to strengthen our pastor. In the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord God, for your divine protection over her. Thank you for protecting her anointing. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, God, for protecting the favor that's on her life, God. In the name of Jesus. God, we thank you that as she travel up and down the highways and the byways, God, that you continue to give her safe travel. In the name of Jesus. So God bless her. Bless her going in and her coming out. Her rising up and her sitting down in the name of Jesus. Then God, bless everyone this morning that's under the sound of my voice. In the name of Jesus. God, you know every heart's cry. You know every secret prayer. So God, in the name of Jesus, I pray that you would grant it this morning, God, in Jesus' name. And then have your way, Lord. Have your way in this service that your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And we will be so careful, hallelujah, Lord God, just to give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise, God, because it all belongs to you. This is your servant's prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, God.
Church. I'll be reading from the book of John, chapter 20, verses 19 through 31. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together, when the doors locked from fear of the Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again, Jesus said, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, their sins are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. Now Thomas, also known as Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, we have seen the Lord. But he said to them, unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my finger where the nails were and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were in the house again and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your fingers here. See my hands? Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, My Lord and my God. Then Jesus told, them, told him, Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen me and yet believed. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. You got deep on me real quick, Savannah. What's been happening this week? What were you doing? What were you doing? You were on what? Spring break. Anybody go anywhere? You just slept in. Yeah. All that rain. Okay. So, what's happening tomorrow? Anybody know? Solar eclipse. A solar eclipse happening tomorrow. So we, last week we had the resurrection. Tomorrow we had the solar eclipse. Last week we're on spring break. 
We talked, when we said the resurrection, what is that about? Who is that about? God. Okay. Can we see him? <coughs> Are people still? Not physically. Are people still talking about it? Because that was last week. Are they still talking? Are they still talking about Because last week it was all about the Easter bunny and the Easter eggs. Oh, and Jesus rising from the dead. Are they still talking about Um, I'm, Yeah, I think so. A little? <laughs> A little. That's what happens with us as humans, as adults and young peoples. Something exciting happens and then we're on to the next thing. We forget all about it. We say, oh, that was last week. That's tomorrow. We don't know what's happening. Plus, I can't see him. I don't know. I'm not sure. Well, I want you to know one thing. Don't be like doubting Thomas and have a question. Know in your heart that God is real, that Jesus lives, that he rose from the dead so that we could all have a right to eternal life. So I got a bracelet here for you that says he lives. That's a reminder for you. Amen. When things are going on and you, you're not sure who to talk to, what to do, what you can do about it, and then you say, well, they talked about him in church. Know that he lived. That's your reminder. Now, does anybody want, does anybody have a friend they want to give one to? You, can give you, one. you got two more coming down the aisle. <laughs> Oh, okay. All right, then I got two people coming. All right. So I just want you to remember not to be like doubting Thomas. Just because we can't see him like we can see each other doesn't mean he's not with us. He's not looking out for us. He's not keeping us on his mind. Amen? Amen. All right. Thank you. Amen. Thank you, Reverend Pam. You know, this had to be about Jesus. The Reverend Pam usually don't even give y'all nothing. <laughs> he has risen. No, he has, he has risen. <laughs> check, check, T, play the video for Pastor Get in Trouble. <laughs> In the years following World War II, the United States enjoyed a period of remarkable economic growth that included the expansion of domestic travel, thanks to the construction of the interstate highway system, as well as an increase in personal car ownership. However, most Americans still relied on public transit to get to work and make their way around town. And like everything else in Jim Crow America, public transportation for African Americans was segregated. Jim Crow was about separating the races. Some of the Jim Crow laws involved what they called separate but equal, but it really wasn't. The city of Winston-Salem in North Carolina knew all too well the separate and unequal reality of their public transportation system. There was no local bus service to the east side of town, which is where African Americans lived by and large. But we wind up seeing these jitneys organizing into a transportation system that is remarkably successful and efficient. The jitneys, small buses or cars used as shared taxis, filled in the gaps of the larger public transit system. But without the support and infrastructure of the city, traveling by jitney in Winston-Salem was a risky business. City residents often filed complaints against individual drivers, citing unsafe driving practices. Jitney operators even filed complaints against each other, accusing other drivers of stealing fares. And so the mayor impressed upon the community that they needed to find some way to work together. In response, some of the most successful Jitney drivers pooled their money and formed the Safe Bus Company in 1926. The black-owned company would go on to serve the Winston-Salem community into the 1970s. 
Desegregation led to the eventual decline of the Safe Bus Company, whose mission was to meet the needs and ensure the safety of black people in America. Never know you to fail. Wonderful is your name. Let's go. As we give unto the Lord, let us look to the Lord, standing in faith, declaring and proclaiming what we are looking for God to do with the seed we have put in the ground. I stand to proclaim that in obedience to God's word and as an act of faith, I have brought the whole tithe into the storehouse and unto the high priest, Jesus Christ. God is not a liar. Therefore, I expect my financial seed to unlock and open the windows of heaven. I am a good steward over my resources and seek God's divine guidance for how to abundantly live off 90% of my increase. I expect increase in every area of my life for me and my family, claiming jobs and better jobs, benefits, bonuses and raises, settlements, estates and inheritances, interest and income, rebates and returns, gifts and surprises, land and property, lost money found, bills paid off and debts demolished. I believe God is rebuking the devourer for my sake because I have prepared and purposed to give with expectation and a glad heart. I have no lack in my life or home and every need of this house and my house is supplied because God has loosed a blessing for me. Good measure, pressed down and shaken together, running over that family, friends, and strangers are handing over to me. In Jesus' name, amen. Every single Sunday, and let me tell you what happened. We got a phone call this week from one of the members on our prayer line who is uh, not a member of Mount Zion who sold their home. And they called me. They said, Pastor, the profits of my home, I'm going to tithe off of it and send it to Mount Zion. Benefits, bonuses, and raises, settlements, estates, and inheritances. Family, friends, and strangers are handing over in Jesus' name. This person ain't never even been to the church, never even seen the church, never come to Dover, Delaware, but going to tithe the proceeds from the sale of her condo to Miles Island. Family, friends, and strangers are handed over to me. And I'm trying to tell y'all, I'm trying to tell you, we had another member of the prayer line who had never been inside Mount Zion, never met most of the people in Mount Zion, who also just gave $500 to Mount Zion two weeks ago. <laughs> Family, friends, and strangers are handing over. And when you are a good steward over your people, don't give money to broke people. And people don't give money to people who can't handle money. People give money when they see how you spend your money. Family, friends, and strangers are handing over to me in Jesus' name. I'm going to keep saying it. I'm going to say it. I'm going to y'all drag me out of here. <laughs> Family, friends, and strangers are handing over in Jesus. Y'all start, I told you, start talking to your money. Talk to your money. We bless the Lord for all of you. Certainly, we thank God for the privilege to be in the house of God one more time. Good morning, Mount Zion, and welcome to all of our guests. We are glad you're here, whether you're here in the sanctuary or you're watching online. A few announcements to lift into our hearing on today. Um, we want to remind everyone that next Sunday, next Sunday, uh, we will celebrate Exceptional Member Sunday. We are being intentional about creating an opportunity for our exceptional members to participate in lead worship. Those are our members who have special needs that are not always addressed. And so, beloved, if you know persons who have exceptional members of their family, somebody who may be on the spectrum, someone who has some other challenges, someone who needs special attention, someone who has not fit into any other circle. You let them know their circle is meeting on Sunday and we will be glad to have them here with us to lead worship because they are a part of our community. And if you've never felt ostracized or marginalized or disenfranchised, then you ought to tell the Lord, thank you. But we know that there are people in our community that we are not always inclusive of. And next Sunday, we're going to be intentional about including every member of our community. 
We want to remind everyone for a brief moment after service. It really shouldn't take us more than 10 minutes, but I'm believing God is not going to take us more than five minutes. We're going to record a short video for anyone who wants to participate in it. We invite you to participate in it. The video will only be about 30 to 45 seconds long, but it's going to take us about five minutes to line up. <laughs> but stay with us, join us, and we'll do that immediately following the service. A reminder, there is realm training tomorrow. Tomorrow at 12 noon and at 6 p.m. for anyone who wants to learn how to use the church's uh, software system, the membership system. And depending on your membership status, you'll be able to see the church directory. You'll be able to see your financial giving. You'll be able to take a look at the church calendar. You can help us. You can help me if you download the app before you come or access it before you come so that we know that you know what your password is. If you don't know what your password is, have never logged in, need help logging in. If you can just send me a text or an email to me or to the church so that I know ahead of time that you're a person I need to send um, the link to that will be helpful. On May the 4th, Saturday, May the 4th, Saturday, May the 4th, I'm asking you to set aside that time at 10 a.m. We will have a church conference. The bids for our new building, our expansion, expansion project are due the last week of April. And I don't want to, the, the delay in the building project to be on our side. So in advance, I'm scheduling a meeting on May the 4th for us as a congregation to vote on who our builder is going to be. So while they are working out things on the permit side, we can be working out things on the finance side so we can meet in the middle and break ground as soon as possible. So so May the 4th, the do doctrine and discipline of the AME Church says you have to announce it at least two weeks in a row from the pulpit. I'm announcing from the pulpit on May the 4th. We will meet. It shouldn't be a long meeting. Most of us can't read architectural plans, so we'll have to summarize for it anyway. But we want you to come because we want the church's uh, input. And we bless the Lord for that privilege. Last announcement that I am uh, aware. Well, let me say this. Number two, uh, uh, there's supposed to be uh, a solar eclipse tomorrow. Don't stop in the middle of the street to see it. That, that, that's, that's tip number one. Uh, number two, Dr. Letzum and, and Dr. Um, uh, Finley Christian would have me to tell you, don't look at it with your naked eye. And most of y'all now even gonna know you're gonna be in the house taking your two o'clock nap and it'll be gone before you wake up. But we want you to know that it, uh, be mindful for those of you who have children, grandchildren, or who are out and about um, tomorrow. At three o'clock, the women are playing. If anyone's gonna watch the game, that's gonna be a game on today. Y'all hear me? And if you don't watch basketball at three o'clock, turn on the game. Yeah, them sisters is playing. Them sisters, that, that's bad English, but y'all know what I'm talking about. Them sisters is balling. And then, I mean, y'all, if y'all want to watch the brothers later this week, you can. But them sisters, <laughs> them sisters is balling. Amen. Those of you who play uh, sports, you understand for everybody else, that means they are playing very good basketball. <laughs> And we have, a, we have a thank you card to Pastor Crawford and Mount Zion family. Thank you, thank you, thank you for your prayers, uh, texts, and calls regarding my recent misfortune. Your thoughtfulness um, took weeks off of my recovery time. Still recuperating, but we'll see you soon, Brother Branker. And we continue to thank God for his healing. That's all of the announcements that as I know them to be. Please read your bulletin, your newsletter, or call somebody, ask them what's going on in Jesus' name. Come on, choir, take us higher. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Come on, praise the Lord. Uh, normally, uh, we would do uh, something uh, that would reflect what's happening now, but on occasions, uh, I would like to always try and present a hymn of the church, a great hymn of the church. And this morning, we're going to ask all of you to join us in the singing of Blessed Assurance. Thank you.
normally get all month when animals were losing their mind because the earth was quaking and where people are paying $800 a night to see the moon hide the sun there are a lot of things we're unsure of but none of them are related to you indeed you are our blessed assurance and so God, magnify yourself in this moment. Glorify yourself in the articulation of my words and in the ears of the hearer. That when we come down from this mountain, we will say it was good that we had been here. And that the Lord was among us and indeed our hearts did burn within us. We thank you, God for fresh fervor fire and favor in jesus name amen scripture was lifted into your hearing earlier coming from the gospel of john thank you evangelist mcintyre i'm going to lift into our hearing just verse 19 and 20 of john's chapter 20. On the evening of the first day of the week, when the disciples were together, when the doors were locked for fear of the Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and side, and the disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. For the few moments that are mine this morning, I want to preach to you from this thought, Who's there? Who's there? Knock, knock. Cow says. No, a cow says moo. The knock, knock joke has been a staple in American humor since the early 20th century. I can tell y'all age by whether or not y'all responded to the joke. 
with his repetitive setup and his word play. And before there were knock-knock jokes, Sister Jackson, there were do-you-know jokes. You would walk up to someone and say, do you know Arthur? And they would say, Arthur who? And then you would say something corny in response. <laughs> but in this morning's pericope, the door is locked. No one has knocked, but someone is there and it ain't a laughing matter. This morning's pericope reports one of John's post-resurrection, pre-ascension appearances of Jesus. Last week, we wrestled with Mary and the women and the disciples trying to figure out who had the body. But today, we stand in the assurance of knowing that the body was not stolen. But God had supernaturally came by, woke Jesus up, made his bed, and got him ready for the post-resurrection appearances. Everything was in line with the messianic prophecies and the foretelling or foretelling of Jesus. He was betrayed by Judas, turned over into the hands of men who turned him over into the hands of the chief priests and the teachers of the law who in turn condemned him to death and turned him over to the Gentiles who in turn mocked him, flogged him and crucified him and ultimately before the cock crowed three times just as he said he was denied thrice by Peter, a member of his inner circle. Tell somebody you got to watch your inner circle. But most significantly, Sister Barbara, he had gotten up from the dead three days later, just as he said he would do. Yet, Brother Anderson, with all of that, the disciples are now locked in the room, living in fear, and it ain't no laughing matter. The scriptures tell us that when Jesus was in his most vulnerable position on the cross at Calvary, none of the 12 hand-picked, personally selected and appointed disciples even made an appearance except John, the disciple that he loved, Sister Kelly. Yeah. Nevertheless, in today's text, we find that Jesus still shows up for them in the midst of their fear. This is not the only post-resurrection appearance of Jesus. And this is not the first post-resurrection appearance of Jesus. The Gospels actually tell us of at least five post-resurrection appearances. He appeared to Mary Magdalene in John chapter 20. He appeared to the other women in Matthew chapter 28. He appeared on the road of Emmaus in Mark and in Luke. He appeared to Peter in Luke and in 1 Corinthians. And he appeared to the ten disciples with Thomas being absent. And in this morning's pericope, we are privy to John's telling of the post-resurrection story. According to John, we find this post-resurrected Jesus unexpectedly appearing to a group whom he startled, Sister Alnita. John doesn't tell us who is in a group. John simply says, they. They could be the 11 disciples. They could be the disciples and the women. They could be all of those who have now come to believe. I'm not sure who they is. But I don't think it would be theologically irresponsible to surmise that some of they who are in the room are those who did not show up for them, for him when he showed up for them. I can't help but wonder if They are startled because they have betrayed him while they waved palms and shouted Hosanna on Palm Sunday. Didn't show up to the cross on Good Friday. Can't help but wonder if some of them are the ones who carried the body to the tomb and laid it in there thinking it was over. It was finished. God was done. God had been defeated. The devil had won. I don't know if it was they who were in the room. I don't know if the room had Simon Peter or Andrew or James or some of Zibidi, those who were sitting at the table fighting over who was going to be to the left and the right. I'm not sure if Peter was in the room after he had cut off the ear of the centurion because he was so committed to Jesus before he went to the cross. I'm not sure of Thomas or Matthew the tax collector or James the son of Alphaeus or Simon the zealot were in the room. I'm not sure if the people in the room were the same people who were afraid.
paid to show up at the cross. Yeah. I, I can't help but wonder if blind Bartimaeus, who was no longer blind, was in the room. Or the paralytic who he told to take up his mat and walk had made it yes. to the room. Yes. I wonder if the woman with the issue of blood who couldn't get anybody to help her for 12 years yes. even bothered to show up and talk about Jesus in the room. I, I wonder if the woman who had been caught in adultery, who they were trying to kill, but Jesus exonerated, even bothered to show up in the room. I, I wonder if Peter's wife's mother, who had been sick on her bed and on her way to see God in her death, was even in the room. I'm not sure who was in the room. And I guess, Sister Jane, the 4,000 and the 5,000 who had been hungry in the wilderness that he fed, I'm assuming that they weren't in the room. After all, they, whoever they was, they had lied on him and talked about him and allowed him to be set up and abandoned and left to die on the cross. But in spite of who they were, yeah. Jesus showed up in the room. Yeah. Perhaps they were startled because they realized that they had wronged Jesus, but that Jesus would not wrong them in return. Maybe they were startled and in fear and scared because they were worried about if they were next. Because some people don't care about nobody but them. Uh -huh. <laughs> so true. Remember the Jews and the Romans had persecuted Jesus and now maybe they didn't really gather to talk about how great Jesus was. Maybe they were gathered in a room to figure out how they could get out of there before they got got. And I'm sure as they are sitting in this room, it does not help that Jesus has shown up with his scars and not showed up just once, but showed up twice to show them the wounds in his hands or his wrists from the nails to show them the wounds that were in his feet or his ankles from the nails to show them where they had pierced them in his side and as my grandma would say and the blood came streaming down <laughs> Jesus Jesus has showed up in his pre-glorified body Jesus has been hurt but Jesus shows up Despite everything that Jesus has been through, Jesus still comes through in spite of what has happened to him. Yes, Beloved, I'm not going to be before you long this morning, but I came by to encourage somebody this morning. I want someone to know that Jesus and is, a, is a part of the Godhead and God is a keeper of God's word. In the worst moments of your life when everyone else walks out and everyone else throws in the towel and gives up hope. When somebody has pronounced a benediction on your life. I want you to know Jesus will still show up. Somebody here needs to understand that even on your worst days when you don't want to get out the bed you're walking around with your do-rag and your pom-pom cap. Jesus Jesus still shows up. I want you to know when you're sliding your feet in your fluffy slippers and you're still walking around with your moo moo at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, that those are the days Jesus will show up. I'm talking about the days when you are on the couch with a bag of lays and a pint of hockey dog. Those are the days that Jesus will show up. I'm talking about the days when your eyes are swollen
showed up. I don't know what you're going home to. I don't know what's going on on your job. I don't know about the craziness in your family. But what I know is that when you need them, Jesus shows up. The Bible says that in the presence of the Lord, in the fullness of 